Hello! <laughs> I'm gonna show you guys how I edit my portraits on Photoshop. So, um, if you'd like to see how I added these leaves from a previous picture that I've taken, you can just click somewhere on the screen. It'll be here. I don't know, like maybe here. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, um, what I'm going to do with this is just merge down what I've done before. Um, just edit. Okay. <laughs> Okay, um, so now I like to work on the blemishes and red spots that I have on my face. So I'm just gonna zoom in. This is me, so don't, I'm, I'm not like being mean to someone, being mean to myself. Okay, so I like to go to the um, patch tool right here, and it's just this little spot under the you know the color slug tool, eyedropper, and then brush tool but yeah okay so I just like to click that and then basically what you do with this beautiful thing is you find a little blemish like I have this little red spot here and I'm just gonna move it to somewhere that is clear and then I just do that to all the little spots that annoy me on my face so yeah I mean like Honestly, if you have a, a portrait that's kind of like farther away, you won't notice it. Unless you're shooting in raw, you might notice it. I don't, I don't know. I'm not professional on the file sizes of your photo, but <laughs> I like to use JPEG. See, my laps are, chi my laps are chipped, really. My, um, my lips are chapped, so I've been playing around with this lately. I just kind of like drag it to another spot. Um... Yeah, it's pretty annoying. Um, it's probably a little bit more, you know, chapstick, but I just don't. Yeah, that's fun. Okay, um, so yeah, I'm just gonna do the select, move, select, move. And one thing that you really should know about this is always select around the blemish. Yeah, I just selected not around the blemish and it looked really weird. So now I'm going to select farther around the blemish and it works. See, I also have little under eye circles, so I'm just literally going to select the entire under eye circle thing and just drag it down. And that will hopefully work out for you. Sometimes it doesn't work out for me, but that's okay because there's always tomorrow or something. I don't know how that saying goes. Okay, but yeah. Okay, so another thing I like to do if my chin's being annoying and red and blotchy and annoying and, ugh, is um, I like to go to the eyedropper tool and select just a clear color of skin that I have and then go to the paint and just put the opacity really low and um, kind of just paint over my little spots very, with very, very low opacity, just like the tiniest little bit. Just like paint over it and then zoom out and it usually works yeah it works okay I do the same thing with my nose since I wear glasses most of the time I get an awkward sunburn on my nose right there because I don't like put any sunscreen on and I probably should but okay. <laughs> I mean it's the fall and the clouds are out okay but anyway so I go back to the eyedropper tool and I select a clear spot on my face and then I just like paint over. I'm sorry my phone keeps ringing I keep just I just paint over the nose and that works out which is good Okay, so another thing that I really like to do to give that dark effect <laughs> suggested by someone on the screen who kind of forgot their name, but oops, they're on the screen, um, is I like to duplicate the layer and um, go to curves and just drag down the curves a lot. Not a lot, I mean a, a good amount, I guess, but yeah. And then I just create a layer mask and invert the layer mask by just, you know, going to image, adjustments, and invert. Then I go to my paintbrush, and I just kind of go in the spots where it needs more shadow to make it look better, like a full frame camera. Um, I usually do like the nose, like kind of around the nose, um, and then on the lips too sometimes. It doesn't give that much of a difference, but you'll see, you'll see, you'll just see. <laughs> I also like to do around the face because it makes it look like it has more quality to it and it gives you like a 
more oval like face I don't know it just looks better in my opinion so yeah it's this very subtle difference um, since my opacity is really low right now it's a really subtle difference but if you wanted to bring the opacity up really high like maybe even to 100% that's cool but yeah sometimes I like to do just kind of play around with what I can do here Also, I would like to do it in the hair sometimes, so I know my hair looks considerably messy right here. I don't really care. Um, oh, look, there's some gray hairs. Wow, I'm so old. Okay. So, I just like to, like, darken that kind of thing. Um, I know my hair is super frizzy. Sorry about that. I don't really care. Um, so, yeah, I'm just, like, darkening some objects in the photo to make them look like they have more depth. Like, sometimes I like to do the creases in my shirt or in my arms. Uh, I think that's good. So yeah, I'm just kind of doing that wherever I think needs it. So yeah, I think that it's good. It's nice to do. It gives it more of a contrast. Okay, so now I'm just going to left click, same merge down. I'm going to do the exact same thing, but I'm going to add light to the image as well. So I'm just going to go to image adjustments curves right after I've duplicated the layer. And just bring up the curves like a nice amount right there. And so now I'm just going to add a um, layer mask and invert layer mask like I've done before. And then just paint wherever I feel like it has need to be. So like under the eyes or on the nose and the forehead sometimes, maybe on the chin, like on the face usually because that's where the model is um, being, you know, looked at, I guess. I mean, you're not going to look at the model's eyebrow. I mean, unless you're an eyebrow enthusiast, that's cool, but, you know. <laughs> so yeah, I'm going to do that. So I also like to do it on my hair. So if there are some light spots in my hair, I like to add some contrast to that just by painting on the white onto the black um, layer mask. So next, what I really like to do is, I mean, I'm just going to merge it down, and then I will probably just duplicate the layer by dragging it down to this cool little icon right here. Looks like a layer and another layer. I don't know. Um, sometimes I um, will just control a bit more with the lips because my lips are really chapped in this image. I don't know why. Just mean little lips. Okay. I'm going to do the same thing that I did before. Just take a color, go to the paintbrush, and just put the opacity really low and just paint over where I think it should be. So here you can see this difference. My lips look really weird. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's kind of really helpful. Um, so now I'll just merge those together. Um, and I'm like, I'm, I really love, I just love curves. Um, well, you know what, I'm going to duplicate this layer again just in case. So I go to image adjustments and curves. <coughs> and I have like all of these presets um, downloaded on Photoshop already. I really like the Julia Trotti um, presets. See, I have a lot, but um, I usually just play around with the presets that I have. So let's say I'm going to try Rivers and Rain by Julia Trotti. Okay, so this is this nice preset. Um, sometimes it looks like my face is too weird and it looks weird and um, it's contrasted odd with my hair. So I'll just bring down the shadows there and you can just play around with your curves um if you guys want a tutorial on curves um you know different things you can do with curves how to control curves just let me know so i have this preset that i downloaded from some awesome photographer um and if i don't like how harsh the colors are and i've tried to change it already in photoshop i will just go to the opacity of the layer that i duplicated earlier and I'm just going to bring it down to like at least 40%. Mm. Actually, you know what? I think I'm going to go like 60 something percent. See how that looks. And you can just control your curves later. A very helpful thing you can do is um, if you like one curves thing that you've controlled, you can just duplicate the first layer and make that one curves thing that you've controlled just invisible for the moment and then edit that one copy that you just copied from the first layer. I hope that makes sense. So what I've chosen to do when editing with the curves 
um, is just simply after I copy the first layer, I would combine the two layers. So I see that the first edit that I did looks too blue, or it looks not nice enough, you know, not to my liking. So I add another layer and edit that one, and then we can combine them together. So this is brighter, and I just like it more. So once you're done editing with your curves, I just take the layer that you edited with the curves or the layers, and just merge them down to the original layer. And if you want to go back and edit your face a little bit more, edit your eyes, you can totally do that. Um, if you'd like a tutorial on how to edit your eyes, just like like this video, comment on below, whatever you like to do with that. And yeah, I hope you enjoyed this and I hope it helped you some way. I mean, I'm sorry that you wasted 10 minutes on your, of your life watching this and having no idea what I'm doing. But if you did, that's good. I'm doing what I wanted to be doing. So, okay. Thank you guys so much. And if you'd like to see the before and after picture, just keep on watching.